we never heard anything like that before. And we saw something swirling the clouds, swirling and debris going everywhere. You know, it's a scary thing. You think this will never happen to you, but it can. Pamela flew off the side of the house. That's when I realized I was in a tornado and I just laid down. Honestly, I was I just went into prayer because I was like, oh my goodness, what does this mean for our students as well as for myself? Whatever federal resources can be made available to families that's appropriate, we'll work closely. It was almost like a war zone. And all I could think about was all I think about was Ashton. An EF2 tornado ripping up parts of Greensboro and Rockingham County killing one person in its path, uprooting trees, homes, and communities. But the hundreds of buildings in ruins were met with hundreds of volunteers, hundreds of hours of service, and hundreds of thousands of dollars raised. And now, a year later, we're taking a look at how that money is being spent, how families are doing, and how neighborhoods are different, for better or for worse. After the storm went by, I, I was on, on my way up here and I got a call on the cell phone saying that, uh, Mr. Gravely, your roof is off. But it was much more than just the roof. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was uh, the second floor and then the windows and doors were out on this particular floor, on the first floor. A year later, Clinton Gravely's architect firm is still in shambles. We had um, a little mezzanine up there. Plants were all around. He's been looted, contractors out thousands of dollars in tools, and all his copper pipes gone. Very frustrating. <laughs> he also had to tear down the damaged rental homes on his property, an empty space where others have taken to dumping their trash. These are the kind of things that, uh, you know, you question. Down the road, Pastor Lester Woodard dealt with chaos at his church. The roof ripped off, items inside and out, stolen. One trial after another. And my heart goes out for people that, uh, who really was stealing, especially stealing from the house of God. Uh, it's sad. The devastation to Hampton Elementary was amazing. There were three trailers right over here and there was absolutely nothing left of them. It was amazing right down to the foundation. And I just cried. It was just that sad. I felt upset. I liked it, that school. Peeler School, it's closed and I don't think they're going to reopen it. I'm not sure. I don't want to start crying or anything, but on that day, um, I'm just so thankful that it wasn't a school day to look at that area. I'm sure we would have had some fatalities. You know, it's hard to believe that a year has passed. We've made a lot of progress, but there's still an awful lot more progress that needs to be done. I used to cry when I would come into the neighborhood because it's pitiful. The neighborhood is just pitiful. I just don't like the boarding up of houses, and it looks real, real terrible. It do. It makes the neighborhood look bad. People take advantage of you when there's a lot of darkness. You know, they, they seem to pro run around and probe and see what you do have. For some reason, we just can't seem to get the lights back on out here. If you drive around the neighborhoods hit the worst, you still see reminders of all the wreck that was there. Blue tarps, houses abandoned, trees still down. It fell down and came across the um, shrubber here and landed on my window. There is not a week goes by that we are not talking and planning about recovery. We know it's going to take a long time, but you have our attention and that, you know, you've got our focus that we are going to rebuild these neighborhoods better than they were. I witnessed a house nearby where this tree had been thrown through a brick house. Another house, there was a piano standing in the corner of the living room and all these bricks just demolished and the roof gone. Somehow this elderly couple survived. 
And in the midst of this tragedy and disaster, someone went up in that room and he started playing music. Remember this momentum? The neighbors, they didn't wait for 911, for fire or for police or for the city to come help them. They were just helping themselves and they immediately mobilized. Do you have water? This feels awesome. I've never seen the support here. I've never seen it anywhere. It helped neighbors. It tarped roofs. It cleaned rubble. These are our people. we got to help our own. I would expect it for me if it happened to me, I think. And a year later, roads are passable. That really, that, that's going to go a long way. Power is back on. To be even in our lives, to, 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 to come to even check on us, to, to do the work. Everybody that had anything to do with this house, I think they were, they were angels. A father and son in Rockingham County crushed in their car on the men. Just to see him doing a lot better than he was on the 15th. We've come a long way since then. Children are very resilient. I think the children just did extremely well. It's a thank you paper. We're still learning, we're still together, and we're still a family. So let's go about our business and be positive and be thankful that there is a place for us. This was my family's home, and uh, I grew up here. Gwen Knight was like a lot of others, a home in ruins, but she didn't qualify for FEMA or have homeowner's insurance. So I didn't know what we were going to do, to tell you the truth. One of the things that we really had to do is build bridges of trust. The city partnered with nonprofits and used donation dollars to help homeowners rebuild for free. The tragedy has become um, something beautiful. There's still work ongoing, and others have already made it back home. It took about nine months, uh, and it was hard labor, uh, continually, so long hours. I think sometimes we must go through the valley in order to realize that God is still with us. Some people couldn't come back. And of course, the curiosity is killing me, I'm wondering. What's going to be put there? The city is working with partner agencies to try and buy the lots to rebuild. So it's a way to strengthen the neighborhood and the community rather than leaving a vacant lot or a vacant property there. A year of prayer, perseverance, patience. Wondered, prayed a lot, you know, when and if, you know, we would be able to get to that point. And the civic houses and, and, and things that have been fixed up and changed, it, it's, a, it's a blessing. It, the neighborhood itself is, is better. It's better. <laughs>